Hey YouTube, welcome back to another video. Um, as promised for the last couple of videos, and I know I'm stuck to my promise, I wanted to do you a green tree python update on the terrarium, or paludarium rather, and the snake itself, and I know we haven't looked at it since the last reptile room tour video, so if that's something you're interested in, then please stay tuned. But without any further ado, let's crack on with today's video. Welcome back. So a lot of the questions I've had on my YouTube videos, a lot have been around this um, paludarium. Um, so I thought a good chance was today to cover um, a lot of the questions I'm being asked um, and a good chance to clear a few things up. Firstly, I've had this snake for about two years. Um, I had it when it was a juvenile, as you can see it's grown quite a lot since. Um, it's coming up to about three years old now. Um, I believe it to be a male, I haven't actually had it probed, but given the size of the snake, looking at the shape of the head and a few other little things like that, um, I believe it to be a male, but sure, I will look to get the snake sexed so we can actually give it a name officially and I will be looking to breed it in the future. So just a bit of background, so this was probably the snake that actually got me into reptiles in the first place. Despite having a ball python, the same as a lot of people to begin with, it was the iconic animal really that got me in, into reptiles in the first place. Now I did have a break from keeping reptiles for quite a lot of years to be honest, but probably over five years. Um, when I was living on my own, I couldn't really afford to keep animals and didn't really want to do it if I couldn't afford to look after them the way I wanted. This was the second animal that got me back into reptiles. This actually took over this terrarium, which used to be my red-eyed tree frog terrarium. When we moved house, we had a lot more space and I had a designated room, the one we're in now. So I was able to expand a little bit more and get some of the animals I'd really, really been after over the years. So a little bit about this setup, so this is an Exoterra 45 by 45 by 60 centimetre terrarium. Um, this is only a temporary measure, to be honest it's probably the setup I wanted to change up before now. And we were intending on moving before now but we have had a couple of issues but that's all been resolved and we should be moving our house into our new house shortly. With a bit much bigger room and looking to get a much bigger setup for this snake. Now a couple of you commented on the size of the terrarium. Like I mentioned, it's not something ideal at the moment. The snake is still very healthy, as you can see, it's quite alert, bright eyes, still eating, still going to the toilet, still very active, so I'm not concerned, I'm keeping an eye on him nonetheless. But I will be looking to upgrade the setup, like I said, I'll be looking to try and build something myself, and um, again, a bioactive setup. For those of you who've seen this setup in the past, I mean, it does actually have a water section, as you can see now. But for those of you who've seen this video before, or a video of this snake before. Um, I used to keep some black phantom tetras in the bottom as well as some Corydora. I did actually lose a couple of the, I did actually lose the Corydora when we did have the heat wave unfortunately so I was really really sad and these fish had been in here since I set this tank up just over two years ago. They're not particularly nano fish and they were rescue fish and I just wanted to give them the home for the time being. They are actually currently in my 15 gallon community tub now. I want to give them a bigger home and there was no real need for them to be in this setup. Interestingly though, since I've moved the fish, the snake does actually, as he's doing now, perching above the water, looking down as if he knows they're not there. He did used to take a look at the fish and it did look like he would strike at them, but it was so small he'd never actually get hold of them and never actually witness him striking at the fish, so it was never an issue keeping the fish with the snake. However, it might be something I'll do going forward, but I think from what I've learned, it was, was an experiment. I would only do this if I had a lot bigger setup, so, you know, pretty much an aquarium within a terrarium. Um, that's not to say it's not something I'm going to do going forward, but definitely not something I'll be doing on this smaller scale again. Like I said, it was an experiment, and it's nice to try new things, but I don't really want to put the animals' lives at any risk or, you know, affect their health in any way. So this terrarium was made with, the background rather, was made with expanding foam um, then covered in silicone, covered in cocoa bark, cocoa fibre, dried sphagnum moss, a bit of charcoal um, just my own little mixture really where I find I like the consistency of. And this was only my second build. There is a water feature in the back as well leading it down into a pond, a stream and then into the main water section which the fish used to live in. A lot of you have asked how this works, how this is filtered, you know, how, how you go about making something similar yourself. 
So the bottom was actually made with egg crate. So for those of you who don't know what that is, it's basically just a light diffuser. Then it's zip tied together, just as a bit of a platform to make a base. I've actually got two internal aquarium filters in here. Uh, one running on its own and one's actually running as well, which is powering the waterfall. So as I've sectioned the water area off, the water actually does go all the way to the back at the same height. So as you can see, the waterfall actually drips down into a little pond and then into a stream and runs into the main water section. Obviously something to consider if you're going to be doing something similar yourself and block off the area like I have. And um, obviously just consider you'd need to put overflow holes in. Obviously you wouldn't want the water running all the way into the front and not getting back behind where it needs to go. Obviously that would cause the tank to overflow. So have a little look at that now so you can see how I've made overflow holes. Just because I've used foam, um, it's quite easy just to pierce holes in and I've done that as and when I've needed to. Because obviously the, the rate of flow changes, obviously the amount of water that runs through does change over the period of the tank being set up. If I do notice that the water level isn't how it should be, I do check the overflow holes that I've made just to make sure they're not blocked and see whether you need to add any more. And just as easily you can use some dry expanding foam to block them back up if you need to, if you need less. As you can probably see on some of these clips, I did plan this out. It did look quite nice when I actually did it. It wasn't very realistic for the type of animal I'm going to keep in here. As you can see at the moment, there's just really pothos in this tank because anytime the snake moves around, it tends to rip out plants, break them, kill them. So it wasn't very practical, so I've learned quite a lot from that. When I do actually get my bigger setup, I will be looking at getting a list of quite robust plants you can use in setups like this. You know, you can't really set it up like you would a dart frog terrarium where, where the plants are quite delicate and obviously quite intricate. The snake would just ruin it. So I've learned that the hard way. But I'm not really going to do much with this setup now. Like I said, we are going to be moving very, very shortly. I would like to tidy this tank up a little bit, but like I said, it's not going to be his permanent home and I am more focused on trying to get him a bigger, better setup. So not much work is going to go into this tank other than just the general maintenance, cleaning, tidying, feeding, water changes and that sort of thing. When I do make this new setup, I will be doing a step-by-step -step and putting this on YouTube as well as my Instagram, Facebook and Twitter channels. So if you're not already following me on those, then please make sure you go over and check me out. I do do daily updates on this, my animals, any of my enclosures and anything that's generally going on in the room. If you'd like a better idea on how this terrarium was actually made, then I do have similar videos with setups similar to this. I'm using the same techniques. So I definitely recommend going back through my videos and checking out some of the terrarium builds that I've done. If you want to get an idea of how this has been made, then that's probably the best way of doing that. If there's anything else you'd like to know, then please, please be sure to comment in the section below. I'll be more than happy to get back to you with any questions. So just in general, the care for this tank. So I spray this tank down about three times a day. So that seems to keep on top of the humidity. A lot of the humidity is taken care of by having such a big uh, water area in the tank as well as spraying it down and having live plants in it. Generally the humidity levels anywhere between 80 to 85 usually. Um, it doesn't really drop below that, like I said, because of the water section, which is perfect for the green tree python. Just be mindful there's plenty of ventilation, plenty of airflow, because you the last thing you want is a tank like this to go stagnant. I heat in this tank with just a ceramic heat emitter, so that's placed on top of the tank on the mesh. That's usually running anywhere between 28 degrees to 32 degrees Celsius, and that's on a thermostat. Obviously, it's really important to make sure you've got a temperature gradient in the tank, especially with a tall tank like this. It's not the biggest tank to try and get achieve that with. But I've placed the heat um, emitter right at the front of the tank, which gives him a nice hot basking spot, and then a few different levels on a few different branches. I feed the snake usually once once a week i don't usually stick to the same day i like to try and vary it up a little bit it does try and it does keep them a bit more interested in feeding i always make sure i feed after dark just so he knows when i go in the tank in the daytime it isn't feeding time on that note he when i initially wanted a green tree python i always i i'm not one of those people that needs to handle every animal you have and i always wanted a bit of display animal so i never did much handling with this snake only a little bit when it's a juvenile but it wasn't very uh, it wasn't a very friendly snake, didn't really seem to appreciate being handled. I don't know if I'm going to do any more work with him in the future. If I'm going to look to breed him, I likely will try and handle him a bit more, just so it's easier to manage. You know, if I need to get him out of a tank with a female, then that would be quite difficult if it wasn't very handleable. If any of you have got any tips on how to achieve this, then please let me know in the comment section below. It was probably the wrong way around to do this, to wait for the snake to be so big in order to try and tame it down, but... 
I never intended it to be an animal as in terms of a pet. I just wanted something, a nice display animal that you take a look at and appreciate. And from what you can see, who wouldn't appreciate a beautiful snake like that? Don't let that cute, derpy face fool you. It does look like he just wants to come out and play. Guaranteed I open that tank with my hand in and my hand is going to get bitten. For those of you who don't know, um, green tree pythons actually have the largest teeth of any non-venomous snake. So to get a bite from one of these is not pretty. I've been tagged once, unfortunately that was on the chin, by this snake and it is not a pleasant experience. Luckily it didn't catch me too badly, but I wouldn't want a chance getting bitten properly. It's not going to kill you, it's nothing serious, it's just not very nice. Okay, so quite a short video, I know. I just wanted to get a few things out there about my Green Tree Bank and setup. I know a lot of you have been asking, so I needed to get that done. Plenty of things going on in the next couple of months. I'm hopefully looking to be moving house very shortly, so it's going to be a very, very busy time with moving, managing animals, YouTube, everything else. So please bear with me. I'm trying to get videos done prior to this busy period just so I can upload on a regular basis. But I do promise there will be a lot more exciting things to come once we can expand, get a bigger room and obviously try and do and set these animals up as I want. Like I said, this will be the first setup that I'll actually change. Just like I said, the snake's getting a little bit larger now. Not to the point where I'm really, really concerned, but I wouldn't want to leave it, you know, another six months in this tank. I hope this has cleared quite a few things up for you. Like I said, if you want any more updates, then please check me out on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. I really, really appreciate your support. I will be doing a Christmas competition giveaway soon with some t-shirts and some mugs. And I'm actually wearing one of those t-shirts now. I'll just turn the camera around and show you. So, as you can see, first purchase one of my own shirts. Come the other day from Redbubble. Really, really happy, really nice quality. If you want this one exactly, this is a premium shirt on Redbubble and I'll include the link in the description. Plus there's many more many more designs, so if there's other animals you're interested in, they're generally around fish and reptiles, then please go check it out. I really, really appreciate any support and any of the money that I make will go back straight back into this channel and my social media sites and just making this channel and room even better. So if you can go check that out, I'd be really, really thankful. Now I've got that shameless plug out of the way, just so want to say a massive thank you to everybody for getting me this far. It's coming up to just over a year now we've been running this channel, almost hitting 1500 subscribers, um, coming up to 100,000 views which is insane, never really intended it to go anywhere. To some people that might be nothing but to me it means a massive amount. So again, thanks to everybody who's been supporting me from the beginning, thanks to any new subscribers. If you're not yet to subscribe, then please, please do. Don't forget to hit that notification bell, because I haven't yet got a schedule for my videos yet, so just be sure not to miss any by hitting that notification bell. But I think that's enough from me, and that's enough from the snake. P.S. If anybody does have a gender neutral name for the snake, they've got any suggestions they'd like to name it, then I'm open to that. I do believe it to be a male, but if we want to name him before, I'll leave it down to you. So, on that note, thanks again from me, thanks again from the snake, and we'll see you next time.